Welcome to the City of Bakersfield Planning Commission meeting. This television broadcast is brought to you by the local cable companies, the County of Kern, and the City of Bakersfield. You can watch the rebroadcast of this meeting Saturday at 7 p.m. and Sunday at 10 a.m. The agenda for this meeting can be downloaded at www.bakersfieldcity.us. Presiding over this evening's meeting, Chair Daniel Cater. Good evening. It is my pleasure to call to order the April 20th, 2023 Planning Commission meeting. Madam Clerk, would you please call the roll? Chair Cater. Here. Vice Chair Bashir Tash. Here. Commissioner Biddle. Commissioner Komen. Here. Commissioner Lomas. Here. Commissioner Neal. Here. Commissioner Wade. Here. Please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. Thank you all for attending tonight's Planning Commission meeting. This commission provides an opportunity for public participation in the development process throughout the city of Bakersfield. The Planning Commission considers a wide variety of projects, including subdivision maps, zone changes, general plan amendments, and much more. When applications are received, the City Planning Division analyzes the request. Planning staff will present the facts about the project along with their recommendation to the commission who will approve an item or make a recommendation as appropriate. Madam Clerk, next item, please. Agenda item 3A, public statements. Does anyone in the audience wish to address the commission regarding items listed on tonight's agenda? Please note if you are here for non-consent public hearing item 6A, this is not the time to speak. You will be given an opportunity to speak on when that item is called later in the meeting. Agenda item 3B, non-agenda item public statements. Does anyone in the audience wish to address the commission regarding items not listed on tonight's agenda? If so, please come forward and state your name. Seeing none, Madam Clerk, next item, please. Agenda item four, consent calendar items. Please note all matters listed under the consent items do not require a public hearing and will be enacted by a single motion. There will be no separate discussion of said items unless a staff member or a commissioner requests specific items be discussed and or removed for separate action. May I get a motion approving consent items? Make a motion. Commissioner Bashir Tesh. Do I have a second? I'll second. Commissioner Wade. Commissioners, please cast your votes. <laughs> motion passes with Commissioner Biddle absent. Thank you. Madam Clerk, next item, please. Agenda item five, consent public hearings. Now is the time for consent public hearing items. Please note there is one item tonight on this portion of the agenda. Please note if the item is not removed by a commissioner, staff, or a member of the public, the commission will vote on all items in one motion without further comment. If an item is removed, it will be placed at the end of the non-consent the non-consent public hearing items. At this time, I will open um, consent public hearing item 5A. Does any member of the public wish to remove uh, consent public hearing item 5A for separate discussion? Seeing no mem members of the public, uh, does any commissioner or staff wish to remove consent public hearing item 5A? Seeing no commissioner or staff request, at this time consent public hearing item 5A uh, is now closed. May I get a motion to adopt staff's recommendation on the consent public hearing item, um, incorporating all staff memorandum and revised staff recommendations? I'll make, make a motion. A motion. Oh. I second. Jinx. Oh. Yeah. All right, so we have Commissioner Bashir Tash with a motion, Commissioner Neal with a second. Commissioners, please cast your votes. Motion passes with Commissioner Biddle absent. 
Thank you. Madam Clerk, next item, please. Agenda item six, non-consent public hearings. Now is the time for non-consent public hearing items. Before we begin, I'd like to explain how the process will be conducted. Staff will first give a report, then those in favor of the project will be allowed to speak. Those in opposition to the project will be able to speak after all of those in favor have spoken. Each side will be provided five minute total time to provide rebuttal comments. Individual speakers may ask questions during their statements, but the questions will not be answered until the public hearing on that item is closed. If preferred, written comments may be given to the clerk, who will provide copies to the commission. Please be respectful of others participating in the process in, uh, by not repeating the remarks of previous speakers and presenting any new comments or thoughts in a concise or clear way. Mr. Johnson, would you please provide us your staff report? Yes, thank you, Chair Cater, commissioners, members of the audience, thanks for attending tonight. I'd like to ask Luis Ramirez, one of our associate planners, to come forward and present this case. Um, good evening, commissioners. My name is Luis Ramirez. Uh, I'm an associate planner with the City of Bakersfield Development Service Department Planning Division. Um, agenda item 6A of General Plan Amendment Zone Change Number 220125 and Plan Development Review Number 22-0403. The applicant is Cornerstone Engineering on behalf of the Timothy and Marilyn Banducci, Banducci Family Trust. The project site is located on 19.96 gross acres lot at the southwest corner of Berkshire Road and Ash Road. The request for the general plan amendment to change the land use from high medium density residential to high density residential. The zone change request is from R2, a limited multiple family dwelling zone, to R3, R3 PUD, multiple family dwelling planned unit development zone. The plan development review 22-0403 was submitted to permit development of a 336 unit apartment complex totaling 328,890 square feet of residential dwelling. The complex include 11 three-story buildings comprised of one to three bedroom apartments. Indoor amenities include a clubhouse, community building, and physical fitness building. Outdoor amenities include a pool, spa, multiple barbecue and picnic er areas, and playgrounds. The project will provide 700 parking spaces that's comprised of covered, uncovered, garaged, and electric vehicle spaces. Landscaping will consist of over 360 trees. An environmental study was conducted for the project. Based on the initial study, the determination of the project with mitigation measures would not have a significant effect on the environment. A mitigated negative declaration was prepared and submitted to the State Clearinghouse for review. All public noticing requirements were followed. One comment letter was received during the circulation by the California Department of Toxic Substances Control. Responses to that comment letter are provided in the staff report. In addition, a memo was provided to your commission today pertaining to a comment letter that was received yesterday. Staff recommends your commission approve the resolutions adopting the mitigated negative declaration, the general plan amendment, the zone change, and the plan development review, and recommend the same to city council. That concludes my presentation. Thank you for your time. Thank you. The public hearing is now open. Is there anyone in the audience who wishes to speak in favor of the project? If so, please step to the microphone, identify yourself, and proceed. Good evening, Chair Cater, Commissioner, staff. My name is Patricia Newquist with Cornerstone Engineering. Also with me tonight is uh, Daryl Witten, uh, the project engineer, and the groupie properties uh, gentlemen uh, Jeremy White and Matt Skelton. We also have with us tonight Eris Architect Steve Riger. So Groupie Properties has engaged with the finest architects, landscape designers, and engineers to put forward a well-thought-out plan for this gated 336-unit multi-family apartment development. Pedestrian access and walkability is strongly represented, as well as a long list of amenities proposed 
I know that uh, staff planner Luis Ramirez mentioned a few, but if you look at all the walkability around, we've got gathering areas for fire pits, uh, we've got a dog run, we've got two tot lots, um, age appropriate. We have uh, yoga areas and gathering areas and a lot of beautiful lush landscapes. So I just wanted to point that out. It's a beautiful development. Um, the quest of groupie properties is to build legacy communities of an enduring value. This creative approach translates to places people love to live year after year, decade after decade. We held a neighborhood outreach meeting on Monday, March 20th. We extended the outreach invitations to 600 feet and included a large section of the existing single family development to the northeast of our site. We sent out 64 letters and four of the adjacent landowners attended. Being landowners uh, themselves, they were impressed with our PUD plan and elevations. Um, the neighborhood outreach did not um, get a response from any of the single family residents that are in the vicinity. Also in attendance was uh, one of the sellers of the property, Mr. Banducci, who at the conclusion of our meeting jokingly stated, not in my backyard. So that broke the ice a little. We enjoyed sharing the plans with uh, those commissioners who uh, managed to fit uh, a meeting into their schedule to introduce the team and the plans. We're confident that this higher density precise development plan checks off most, if not all, of the goals and priority boxes that the city is diligently working toward achieving with the housing element and general plan. In summary, this is GPA a zone change and PUD, and the project provides 336 multifamily units on 17.5 net acres. The engineering team and design team are available to answer any question. And it's my honor to introduce the Group B properties, Jeremy White and Matt Skelton. Hello, I'm uh, Matt, Matt Skelton with uh, the Group B company, or the, as applicants say, the Group B properties. Um, uh, we've been around since uh, approximately 1966. Uh, we're a multifamily developer, traditionally a single-family home developer. Um, we're very active up in Northern California. Um, we have a pipeline of approximately, um, uh, you know, six pro projects, um, you know, over 2,000 units, and um, we, uh, we we haven't developed in in Bakersfield quite some time since the 80s. So we're we're very happy to be um, coming back down here and, and um, having this this great project. So. Um, uh, uh, our uh, our president uh, grew up in Bakersfield, so it's, this project is actually pretty personal to him. He's he's uh, he's really happy to see that we're returning to uh, Bakersfield in so many ways. So, um, you know, I'm available to to answer any of your questions if you have any. Um, Thank you. We'll get to questions after uh, the public hearing, or after everyone has an opportunity to speak. Okay. Are there any other members of the audience wishing to speak in favor of the project? If so, please step to the microphone, identify yourself, and proceed. Good evening. Barry Hibbard. Uh, local real estate guy and uh, work with the gentleman next door that owns the property immediately to the west of this property, Joe Moran, it's under Beach Properties. And uh, it's exciting to see Groupie coming to Bakersfield. And uh, for those of you that have not seen their developments, they are really spectacular. Um, when I first met Fritz Groupie, it was when we were dealing with the partnership for the San Joaquin Valley under Governor Schwarzenegger. And Mr. Groupie and I happened to be on the land use committee. Got to tour a number of his properties as they were usually case studies as far as best in class. And I sat there and I looked at myself and said, how come we don't have this in Bakersfield? How does Stockton get this and we don't? So it was exciting to see you. So guys, thanks for coming down. Um, the R3, the density, part of the state, part of everything else, I think we need to 
watch that and and make sure that we have quality development because some of the R3 developments in Bakersfield haven't turned out as well, right, when you look around town. So I think it's important that we make sure that they are institutional quality investors and developers that are coming to our community to do this because when they go bad, they go bad quickly and they never change. So keeping it at a high level is, a, I think, a very important aspect. And I think the ability to look at the land that's around it. So um, Joe, to the west, attempted to go to R3, and for whatever reason, he wasn't allowed to. I'm encouraged to see that now people are saying that's OK. So he did an R2 PUD, which gets him to 17 per acre, but you can't do this type of development yet with that type of zoning. So encouraging to see the, the planning staff finding new solutions. And uh, once again, very impressed to see Groupie doing a quality project here in Bakersfield. Thanks. Thank you. Are there, is, are there any other audience members wishing to speak in favor of the project? Seeing no additional speakers in favor, um, is there anyone who wishes to speak in opposition to the project? If so, please step to the microphone, identify yourself, and proceed. Seeing no speakers in opposition, does any commissioner have any questions for the public or staff on this item? Remember, this is not the time to express any opinions on the matter, only to ask questions. Commissioner Coleman. Uh, my question is for staff. <clears throat> um, I didn't see any elevations in here. Are we, are we only doing the zoning change or are we doing the entire PUD approval tonight? Or did I just overlook it on the? It is the entire PUD. Um, I'd have to pull up. I didn't print all the attachments, but uh, they did submit elevations. And uh, I, I believe those were included on the link when you access the online version of the staff report. Uh, but there are elevations included, yes. If, if I could answer the question. Um, under PDR resolution, which is the plan development uh, resolution, you'll find them on, I believe they begin page page 15 of that document down to page 20. So this is our one and only shot to look at this? Generally speaking, yes. I have no further questions. Thank you. Are there any other commissioner questions? Are there any uh, commissioner questions or? Okay, seeing no additional commissioner questions um, and as there were no speakers in opposition to the project, um, I will defer to the city attorney. Should we proceed to close the public comments? Yes, Move to... yes, no rebuttal. Okay, we will forego the rebuttal period as um, there were no speakers in opposition. And at this time, I will now close the public hearing on the item and return to the commission for comment and action. Commissioner Coleman. Uh, thank you, Chair Keeter. Um, although I hadn't looked at the elevation until just now, um, I, I, like the, I like the location of the project. Uh, I like us moving to a higher density. If I, I would like to have some moderate income uh, provisions, but it is what it is. So uh, I, I think this is a good project. This is a good location for this project. All the, all the, everybody's moving out to that direction anyway, so we need to have this kind of, this kind of housing. Thank you, Commissioner Coleman. Commissioner Bashir Tesh. Uh, I really do like the project. I uh, looked at the last project that uh, Group A had built here in Bakersfield, that was the Edgewater um, uh, homes or apartments off of, uh, I think it's Kroll, there's a Camino. And, uh, you know, 40 years later, they're still, you know, doing well, and the community still looks really good. And so I'm excited to see another development like this come into our town. I think it serves a pretty diverse 
uh, purpose as far as what it offers to its residents. Um, and uh, so I, 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 I like it. I like to see stuff like this coming in. So thank you. Thank you. Um, if there are no other additional commissioner comments, um, I'd just like to uh, give a few comments. Uh, I did have an opportunity to meet with the uh, development team earlier in the week and appreciated uh, the introduction to the project. Um, echoing uh, my commissioners, um, I, I do appreciate projects that um, are pushing density and bringing diverse housing types to neighborhoods that don't have a lot of housing options currently. Um, my questions to staff were mostly staff related and um, I had a good opportunity to talk to uh, Mr. Johnson throughout the week and just wanted, I thought it would be good to know, because um, my, my curiosity with these sites is, you know, we're looking at the, a relatively dense project um, that you know, kind of warrants access from all four sides to, to the adjacent community. And this is um, one of those um, intersections that's very common in our community where this will be the third, inter the third side to be improved and the fourth side remains kind of TBD. And you know, how we, how we do things with roads is we basically put the quadrant, you know, the, the improvements of sidewalk full width full build out on development that's kind of adjacent to the halfway point. And so I just thought, um, you know, as we start to see more density in suburban locations, um, just my question to staff was how we provide realistic accommodations to um, pedestrian safety um, access to roads that still have kind of rural characteristics because the parcel across the street is not developed and there's not, uh, you know, it's not, being developed in tandem. And so um, in talking to staff, Mr. Johnson, could you just kind of explain a little bit about road improvements and what, what will, what's planned for this project and then kind of, because I, I do think our conversation was fruitful and productive. Yes, thank you. This is a, a zoomed in portion of the intersection of, of Berkshire and Ash. Um, so this, this project site will be required to do all the frontage improvements, curb gutter sidewalk. Uh, in addition, the Ash and Berkshire intersection has been identified by the city that they will come in. When I say they, the city is planning on coming in and putting in a four-way stop and crosswalks um, for on all four sides. If the city does not come in by the time that the, this development occurs, the developer will be required to put in the four-way stop and those crosswalks. Uh, I do note, and thank you, Chair Cater, for giving me a call, is the track 7213. Um, right now, although that has not gone to City Council to be um, finaled and recorded, they are moving forward. They have dedicated the right-of-way. They have street plans that are in, so that will eventually be developed. Um, we anticipate fairly soon, although that applicant for that track didn't give us a timeline. At that time, the north side of track 7213 or the south side of Berkshire will be developed with a sidewalk. As you can see right now, there will be a gap of approximately 1,000 feet along that track where there will be no sidewalk. Um, there was a question because there's a school at the corner of um, Mountain Ridge and Berkshire, it's elementary school. Uh, I would note that that school is in a separate school district, so this site is in Lakeside Union, and that school is in Panama, Buena Vista, so these students will not be going to that school. Uh, if you look at it as it relates to parks or recreation, um, again, it, there's really no parks to the east, so there would be no real reason for foot traffic to go um, along Berkshire to the east um, at this point in time. We do look at, when I say we, the city does look at um, missing sidewalks and ADA ramps that are within half mile of, of Bakersfield schools and parks, and that's identified in, in four different quadrants of the city. And this one, just for instance, is the southeast quadrant. And so what we look at is if there's pending development on these missing links, 
and if there's pending development then we anticipate that the developer will put that in if there's no pending development in the city prioritizes that for the city to come in and put curb gutter and sidewalk to fill in that that missing area and so going back to the overview of this um, you can really see that most all the curb gutter and sidewalk is in um, and that'll be put in on the tracks on the left. Every, all those tracks that are identified with the asterisk are still pending city council approval, um, but all the other tracks with the solid lines uh, already have curb gutter sidewalk in. And so again, we anticipate that the four corners of this will have curb gutter and sidewalk in, in a reasonable amount of time. Does that answer your question? Yes, and I appreciate that. I know I, um, he kind of had, uh, Mr. Johnson pulled a, uh, a surprise on me when the school that was walkable to the project is actually not in the same district as the project. So, um, but I think regardless, I mean, I, I appreciate uh, the site plan and the connectivity to sidewalks um, and the realistic walking path. And I just think as we look at these projects, um, we need, we just need to think of as a city and I appreciate Mr. Johnson's brief presentation on how the city's assessing gaps in our pedestrian infrastructure to make sure that our roads are are up to the standard of what we're asking developers to build in our city. And so um, I thank you for that. Those are my questions. Um, seeing no additional commissioners wishing to speak, um, I will ask for a motion from the commission. I will make a motion to adopt uh, staff's recommendation on approval. Thank you. I'll second it. Uh, that was Commissioner Bashir Tash and second by Commissioner Neal. Commissioners, please cast your votes. Motion passes with Commissioner Biddle absent. Thank you. Madam Clerk, next item, please. Item seven, new business. Mr. Johnson, would you please uh, provide us your presentation? Yes, thank you. And if I could also have Commissioner Wade come forward. So Commissioner Wade elected not to apply to be reappointed to the Planning Commission. So this will be his last meeting unless we have a special meeting next week, which we're looking at doing. It's for Commissioner Wade, is that? Exa the, exactly. Okay. Um, so a little bit of background. Um, at, it was then Council Member Russell Johnson, he appointed Commissioner Wade at the council meeting of May 18th, 2011. And his first meeting was June 2nd, 2011, and that's the agenda. You can see item E is welcome new member, Patrick Wade, and then they voted on the minutes and pretty much dismissed. <laughs> and his first planning commissioner that was consisted of uh, Jeff Tack, Barbara Lomas, David Strong, Dean Haddock, Elliot Kirschman, and Murray Tragish. And sorry to Mr. Tragish, I couldn't find the photo of him. Uh, during his tenure, he went through 18 different commissioners. There were 166 meetings, and that does not include, surprisingly, over 100 meetings that were canceled because of COVID, lack of a quorum, or insufficient projects. But to that point, there were 887 different projects that were considered during your tenure. Some of those projects were, sim were single projects, such as this general plan amendment zone change. 2013 went to 11.43 p.m., quite late. Last year, we had three projects, only lasted 12 minutes, <laughs> and that was after starting five minutes late. But most projects lasted about an hour to include this one in 2018 that included 19 different projects. So we appreciate all the time that you put forward uh, to the Planning Commission and making Bakersfield grow. The earliest video I could find was 2015, and uh, when I compare that to 2023, 
I often look to see, okay, is, is are there a loss of hair? Is there gray hair? And to the contrary, it almost looks like you gained a little bit of hair. <laughs> also with that, I think you became a social media influencer. 2015, there were nine views. Seven of those were mine looking for the perfect picture. And then last or earlier this year, 147 different views. Uh, one thing I noticed when I was looking through all the videos is that you seem to always sit in the third chair. Okay, right where Commissioner Lomas is sitting right now. And rumor has it the reason you didn't apply is because you were put in that last chair. So that, that'll make us think of how we see, sit people. And I would say I was most nervous about this presentation because I was like, what if he doesn't wear his signature white shirt? Because if you look at every video, he has a white shirt on. He's always wearing a white shirt. So with that, Commissioner Wade, we thank you for your commitment directing how Bakersfield was developed during the past decade plus two years. And we have this plaque in appreciation for your outstanding service, 2011 to 2023. Thank you very much. I actually have some comments, and maybe I'll save them to the end sure. uh, in commissioner comments period. So, yeah. Thank you, everybody. And thank, I'm sure that took a lot of time to put together, so I appreciate it. Just about a week and a half, so not too bad. <laughs> That's why I had Lewis present that last project. Would you prefer uh, commissioners to give our sentiments to Commissioner Wade during commissioner comments, or? Yeah, I think so. I just have right. a few really brief comments. Sounds good. If you want to move on to the next Agenda item. item eight, communications. Perfect. So we do have a meeting on May 4th. Um, and then also, if you recall, there is a city council meeting next Wednesday on the 26th. And that is in relationship to the link that I sent previously, which is on the housing element that's out for public review. So that'll be a presentation to city council. You are welcome to attend, uh, but that meeting has, or that briefing to city council has been moved to 3.30 p.m. So if you want to attend, let me know, and we'll make sure that uh, we have seats available for you. And that's all I have, thanks. Thank you. Madam Clerk, next item, please. Agenda item nine, commission comments. Do any commissioners have any comments? I do. All right. Um, thank you for being a good neighbor. <laughs> I haven't been on commission just a year, uh, almost a year now, and um, you've been my my neighbor, and you've been very kind, and I appreciate uh, helping me figure out how to go to the restroom, call a break, uh, and those sort of things. So thank you so much. Um, I also wanted to say. Um, I would love to attend the meeting on Wednesday. I actually had it on calendar, but I don't know if I'll, if I'll be able to make it at 3.30, but I'll try. And I wanted to say, uh, Lewis did a great job on the report, on the staff report. Did he write the report for 6A? Yes, he did. He, he did a great job. I enjoy reading his report. And um, I'm excited about uh, this new high density project. That's it, thanks. Commissioner Coleman. My comments are for uh, Commissioner Wade. Uh, I really appreciate uh, your involvement in the, in the commission. I enjoyed meeting with you and kind of getting to how you think about things, and it's very interesting. So if you haven't met, got to know Mr. Wade, you probably sure should. Uh, but uh, but you have had a lot of influence on some of the things that I think about on the commission, and I really appreciate your input. So congratulations to you, and good luck in whatever you do next. Thank you, Commissioner Coleman. Okay. Yes. Commissioner Lomas. Do you really have to go? <laughs> it's been a long time. Me and you, here a long time. You don't look any older, though. It's a little irritating. Um, I do. So we'll just move past that, but thank you. Thank you for your service. You're a wonderful commissioner and even better human being. So I'm honored to know you. Thank you. Oh, I appreciate you a lot, uh, inside and, and outside of the commission. You're a great guy, and you serve our community well, and uh, thank you for just being a, a young inspiration uh, and just paving the way for, for, uh, 
for, for us to get involved more and to motivate us. Thanks. Commissioner Wade, uh, well, I'm just gonna say per usual, Commissioner Lomas stole what I was gonna say. Really? I, uh, one of my favorite things is um, like the side-by-sides of public office when they come in and when they leave. And I need to know your philosophy on life, your skincare routine, because you do look exactly the same, <laughs> even though it's 12 years later. Um, and so, yeah. Yeah, so uh, please post that on any uh, publicly available document. But I also wanna say, I don't know a, a Baker's Hill Planning Commission without Commissioner Wade. Um, you, you've served longer than I have, and um, your presence is felt. Your presence will be, your, will be missed, and um, I really appreciate your perspective. Um, similar to what other commissioners have stated, uh, it's, it's very great to know that your impact on this community doesn't stop in this room, and I am excited to see uh, how Bakersfield continues to be better because you're in it. And so, thank you. And uh, thank you for bringing your family tonight. What an opportunity to get to meet them. And uh, yeah, we uh, look forward to seeing more of your impact in our community in a different capacity. Thank you. Thank you, that, that was all, those were touching remarks. They, they mean a lot to me. Um, and this is the sort of community we live in that I've had um, associations with many of you before this and I feel like I've grown up here with others that I didn't know beforehand. But I mean, Commissioner Coleman, I think I, I know you from the, the State Farm days. Uh, you know, I, I probably met you when I was a kid still, actually, yeah. So um, I, I do have a few comments, a few parting words. I figure I've been here for 12 years. I, I have a, you know, a couple, just a couple minutes, if, if you don't mind me getting on a soapbox for a second. Um, it's been one of the great honors of my life to have served the city and more importantly, the citizens of Bakersfield these last 12, almost 13 years. I'd like to thank Councilman Johnson and Parlier for trusting me with this appointment. I've served on this commission with some remarkable people and I've learned immensely from them. Thank you all for that. I'd like to particularly thank Commissioner Lomas, who as the only member of this commission that predates me, uh, guided me through the early years of my service here and continues to guide the public through very difficult decisions about how their neighborhoods will be affected through city planning. Oftentimes, I've been, um, say more, come on, you know, let's, let's get to the point, I quit repeating, uh, you know, people are repeating themselves and, and I, she has the patience over there. She's kind of the, the mom of the group where she's like, you know, let's hear them out, this is very important. And she has been, uh, she, you moderated me quite a bit on this commission, so. Uh, staff has also consistently been professional, and I feel that they honestly try to continue the tradition of a city that is one of the fastest growing places in California while still protecting property rights. Uh, as a parting message to my fellow and future commissioners, I'd like to reflect on the use of our authority. I've been a bit of an outlier over my 12 years here in that I've generally shied away from aggressively intervening in all, matter, in all matters that have come to this body. We as Californians should have learned in the time since early 2020 that the exercise of government power can be well-intended and counterproductive at the same time. In other words, just because we have the power to do something doesn't mean we should. The citizens of Bakersfield have entrusted us through the city council to oversee the planning of our community, but that doesn't mean that we can take every action in every affair. There's a responsibility that comes with the authority granted to us, sometimes not to exercise that authority. And let individuals at, uh, interact unmolested in their own affairs. Intervening too much can sometimes lead to stifling of development and the curtailment of freedoms. The last comments I'll make today are regarding my profound disappointment at the conditions of my leaving this commission. To be clear, I am not leaving willfully. I've served at the discretion of multiple city councilmen and have put years of work and passion into this service. So I was surprised when I received a call at the end of last year from the new councilwoman elected in November, not only saying that I wouldn't be reappointed, but also that she wanted me to step down immediately. I was stunned after telling her I wouldn't step down, but I would instead fulfill the remainder of my term. I asked why this was happening. 
She told me she wanted to appoint someone who shared her perspective. Since this is our first time ever speaking, I asked how she knew what my perspective was and didn't get an answer. This is a nonpartisan position, and I'm not registered with either major political party. I have a good reputation in town, I hope, <laughs> and I've served the people of Bakerswood loyally and to the best of my abilities over the years. So I'm left with an unsettling conclusion. This decision was made due to my immutable characteristics. My perspective was not defined by my passion for urban planning, status as a new father, or the content of my character, but instead because of characteristics that I have no control over. In this era, in this country, in this state, and in the city of Bakersfield, we should be better than this. I hope my fellow commissioners will warmly greet my successor and guide him or her in passionately serving the citizens of Bakersfield, just as I've done for the past 12 years. Thanks. Thank you, Commissioner Wick. Um, with that, Madam Clerk, next item, please. Agenda item 10, adjournment. This meeting is adjourned at 6-11.